The Lurking Fear by H. P. Lovecraft The Shadow of the Chimney, Part 1 There was a thunder in the air on the night I went to the deserted mansion top Tempton's Mountain. Find the lurking fear. I was not alone, for thoughtfulness was not then mixed with that love of the grotesque and the terrible, which has made my career quest, series of quests for strange horrors in literature and in life. With me were two faithful muscular men for whom I sent when time came men long associated with me in my ghostly explorations because of the peculiar fitness finesse. We had started quietly from the village because of the reporters who still lingered about the Etterich panic of the month before the nightmare creeping death. Later they thought they might aid me, but I did not want them then. Would to God I have let them share the search. I might not have to bear the secret alone so long to bear it alone. The fear of the world would call me mad or go mad itself at the demon implorations. The thing now that I'm telling it anyway, least the brooding make, brooding make me a maniac. I wish I never concealed, concealed it. For I and only I alone know what men of fear lurked that spectacle in desolated mountain. A small motor car recovered the miles, primitive forest and hill, so a wooded ascent checked it. The century born and expect more than usually sinister. We viewed it by night about the accustomed crowds of the investigators, so we were often tempted to use accelerate, accelerating headlight, and beside attention it might attract. It's not a wholesome landscape after dark. I believe I would have noticed it more fully, even if I was ignorant of terror that stalked there. Wild creatures, there were none. They're wise when death leers close. The ancient lightning scarred trees seemed unnaturally large and twisted. Over vegetation unnaturally thick and feverish, with curious mounds and hammocks in a weedy, fulgurative, pitted earth, reminded of snakes and dead men's spells, well to dramatic proportions. Fear had lurked on Tempest Mountain for more than a century. This I learned at once from newspaper accounts, the ca- 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 catastrophe which first brought the region to the world's notice. Places remote, lonely evolution, or part of cat skills. The Dutch situation only once feebly and transcendently penetrated, leaving behind it as it, as it receded only a few mined mansions. In the great squatter population, inhabiting pitful hamlets, vice each slope. Normal beings seldom visit the locality till the state police are formed. Even now, only infrequent troopers patrol it. Fear, however, is an old tradition throughout the neighboring villages. Since it is a prime topic, it's simple discourse. The poor Mongols who sometimes leave their valleys. The trade her in woven baskets, such primitive necessaries as they cannot shoot, raise, or make. Lurking fear dwelt in the shunned and deserted Mentonese fanchion, which crowned the high but gradual eminence, whose liberty, stability, the frequent thunderstorms, gave it the name of Tempest Mountain. For over a hundred years it tweak. Creek, grove, circled stone house, being the subject of stories, curly wild and stunturally hideous, story of a silent colossal creeping death, which stalked around in summer, a whimpering insistence, God has told tales of a demon, seized low pharaohs, or dark, either carrying them off or leaving them in a frightful state of gnaw dismemberment, 
Sometimes, or sometimes they whispered the blood trails towards the distant mansion. Some said the thunder called the Loki fear, fear of its habitation, while others said the thunder was its voice. No one that said backwards had believed these carrying, these varying, in, in, and conflicting stories in the current exaggerate descriptions of the half glimpsed friend that yet a farmer or villager doubted the Mentonese mansion was ghoulishly haunted. Doggishly forbade such a doubt, though no ghostly evidence was ever found by such investigators as he visited a building or some especially valid tale, every tale squatters, grandmothers told strange myths of Magdalene, Magdalene's sector, myths concerning the Magdalene, Magdalene's family, itself its queer heraldry, its similarity of eyes, its long and natural anal annuals, a murder which had cursed it. The terror which brought me to the scene was sudden and portentous confirmation of the man his widest legends. On summer's night, after a certain thunderstorm, unprecedented violence, the countryside was railed by squat, squatter stampede, which no mere delusion could Great pitiful thongs of natives shrieked and wailed at the by and neighbour horror which had descended upon them. They had not doubted, they had not seen it. They heard such cries from one of their hamlets, they knew a creeping death had come. A morning citizen of the state troopers followed the shuddering mountaineers. The place they said the death had come. Death was indeed there. Round a one squat village had caved in of a lightly stroke, drawing several of Mondronous mon- shanties upon, but upon this property damage, the superposed organic devastation repelled it into significance. Possible seventy five natives been inhabited this spot, not one living specimen was visible. Hooded earth was covered with blood of human debris, just speaking too vividly the ravages of human teeth and talons, yet so no, no visible trail led away from the conch. As some hideous animal might be the cause of everyone. Oh. Quickly agreed, not even it nor did any tongue now revive the change. With such cryptic deaths found merely the sorrowed, solid murders, common decadent community decadent moon communities. The charge was revived only when 25 of the estimated population found missing from the dead. Even then it was hard to explain the murder of 50 by half that number. The fact remained that on a summer night a bolt had come out of the heavens and led to the dead village whose corpses were merely mangled, chewed and clawed. The sighted countryside immediately connected the horror, the haunted Mentonese convention, the localities were over three miles apart. Troopers were more sceptical, including the mansion only casually. In investigations of dropping it altogether, they found it thoroughly deserted. Crouching village police, however, like can I canvas the place with infinite care? Overturning everything in the house, sounding ponds and brooks, speeding down bushes, ransacking the nearby forests. Always vain and death had come and left no trace save destruction itself. By the second day, the search affair was fully treated by newspapers, whose roofs, filters overran Tempest Mountain. It described it as much detail, with many interviews to elude. Adjudicate the horrors of mystery, history were told by local grandsons. I have followed in Count's language. At first, I am a connoisseur in horrors, but after a week, I detected the atmosphere which stirred me oddly. Said on August 5th, 1921, registered among the reporters, 
who crowned over the hotel at Leferet's Corners, nearest me- village to Tempest Mountain, a large headquarters of the searchers. Three weeks more, this personal report has left me free to begin terror exploration based on the minute inquiries and surveying which I had meanwhile busied myself. So on this summer night, a distant thunder rumbled. I left a silent motor car, tramped with two armed companions up the last mound, covered the reaches of Tempest Mountain, casting the beams of an electronic torch, spectral grey walls that began to peer through great oaks ahead. A morbid night solitude and feeble shifting illumination. A vast boat slight pile to this played of skill hints of terror, which day could not over- uncover. Yet I did not hesitate, since I had come with fierce resolution to test an idea, bleed at thunder called the death of demon, not out of some here fearsome secret place, to be the demon's solid entity of vaporous pestilence. I meant to, meant to see it. I had fairly chosen search of ruin before, hence knew my plan well, choosing the seat of my vigil, the old room of Jan Mentonese, whose murder looms so great in the overall legends, I felt subtly. The apartment is ancient. Victim was best for my purposes. Chamber measuring about 25 feet square, contained, like the other rooms, some rubbish which had once been furniture, lay in the second story. My southwest corner of the house, Immense east window and narrow south window, both of the void, the panes of shutters. Opposite large window was an enormous Dutch fireplace, with scriptural tiles representing prodigal sun. Opposite the bell window, spacious bed built into the wall. As tree muffled thunder grew louder, raised my plans details. First, I fastened side by side the ledge. Large window, three rope ladders, which I brought with me. I then I reached a simple spot around its side. I tested them. The three of us dragged them over from another window, a wide four post of bedstead, crowning it literally against the window. Having spawned it with four hour barrels, it and they all now rested on it with brawn automatics, two relaxing, while the third watched. From whatever direction a demon might come, a potential bit of escape provided me. Provided it came from the house with the window ladders. We'd get outside the door and the stairs. We'd not think, judging for precedent. It would pursue us far, even at worst. I watched at midnight to one o'clock, and she spite the sinister house. Unprotected window, and approaching thunder and lightning, felt singly drowsy. And between my two companions, George Bennett, having been to pull towards the window, William Tilby, fell towards the fireplace. Bennett was asleep, having apparently let the same of the tonus drowners, which affect me, so I designated Tilby. So the wakes watched her though, even his nodding, it's curious how intently I've been watching the fireplace. The increasing thunder must have affected my dreams. In a par- brief time I slept, it came to me apocalyptic visions. Once I partly woken, probably because the sleeper towards the window had freshly flung an arm across my chest, but not suddenly wakened to see whether Toby was attending to his duties or, to, or felt a distinct anxiety on that score. Therefore I had the presence of evil so potently pressed me. Later, I must have dropped asleep again, for it was out of phantasmal of chaos, and my mind leaped, and night grew hideous, and shrieks beyond anything in my former experience of imagination. Imagination. That shrieking in the most soul of human fear, agony crawled, hopelessly, insanely, ebony gates of oblivion, I woke red madness, Mockery di- di- bog- 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 further and further down, civil visas, a phobic 
in crystalline anguish retreated or very berated. There was no light. I knew from the empty space on my right that Toby was gone. God alone knew, knew whether across my chest still lay the heavy arm of sleeper at my left. A cane of deathly stroke of lightning which shook the whole mountain, lit the deepest scripts, horny grave, and splintered the patriarch of the twisted trees. The demon flash of monstrous fireball, the sleeper sun up sunny, while the glare from beyond the window threw his shadow vividly under the chimney above the fireplace, from which his, my eyes had never strayed, and I am still alive and sane as a marvel. Cannot fathom, cannot fathom it, for the shadow on the chimney was not a joy bonnet or any other human creature, but a blasphemous and unknowing humanity. Of hells, nevertheless, most craters, a nameless, shapeless abomination, which no mind could firmly grasp, on the grass, a pen could partly describe. There was a second, and alone, accused mention, shivering and gibbering. Joe Bennett and William Toby had left no trace, though even a str- struggle they were never heard of again. Part two, a parcel in a storm. For days after that hideous experience, in a forest swayed mansion, lay nervously sorted in my hotel room. Alfred's corners. I do not remember exactly how I managed to reach the photo car, start it, and slip observed back to the village, for I retained a no distinct impression, save the wild um wild armed treasure trees, Dominic mutterings of thunder, curled shadowed shadows. A fault in the low mounds that dotted the street the region. So I shivered and brooded on the casting of that brain blasting shadow. I knew at last, at last primed out one of Earth's supreme horrors, one of those nameless blights of the outer worlds, those faint demon scratchings we sometimes hear in the furthest rim of space, if on which of infinite vision was given us merciful immunity. Shall have seen a hardly dared to analyze and identify. Sometimes, being that lay between me and the window that night, I shuddered whenever I could not cast off the instinct so to classify it. For I only snarled, obeyed, or laughed, tittering me, even that would have relieved my abysmal hiddenness, but it's so silent. It rested a heavy arm and foreleg on my chest. Obviously, it was organic, or it had once been organic. Jan Menti D's, with whom I invaded, were buried in a graveyard near the mansion. I must find Bennett and Toby if they lived. Why had it picked them? And it mean, left me for last. Drowners are still stifling. Dreams are still horrible. Short time I realized I must tell my story. For someone to break down completely. I already decided not to abandon the request of my lucky fear. For my rash ignorance, it seemed to me that uncertainty was worse than enlightenment. However terrible the latter might prove to be. Coolly, I resolved a mind the best course of to pursue. Whom to select for my confidences. And how to track down the thing which obliterated two men and cast a shadow, nightmare shadow. My chief of coincidences of Leferet's corner been affable reporters, whom several had still remained to collect final echoes of the tragedy. It's from these I determined to choose a colleague. The more reflected, the more my preference inclined towards one Arthur Ramro, a dark, lean man about thirty five, his education, taste, intelligent temperament, all seemed to mark him as one not bound to conventional ideas. Experiences. Afternoon in early September, Alvin Rowe listened to my story. I saw from the beginning he was both interested and sympathetic. When I finished, he should analyze and discuss the thing with great shrewdness and judgment. He advised, moreover, was definitely practical, for he recognized the postponement of operations, only he was to mention, until we might come forth with more detailed historical, geographical data. And his intimate initiative 
the cone in front of information. God in terrible mental his family discovered a man just a marvelously emanating and just ancestral diary. He also talked at length to some of the mountain Mongols as they not fled from terror, confusion, and motor slopes, ranging to the sea or climbing tars. Climbing tars. So see the defensively its explanation, a mention light of its detailed history. They have equally exhaustive and definitive explanation, but so with the various tragedies of squatter legend. Votes his elimination were not as first very enlightening, though a tabulation had now then seemed to reveal a fairly severe trend, naming the number of purported horrors was by far the greatest in the area since Coventry avoided a house or connection with it by stretches of mobility now under nourished. However, but there there were in true exceptions. Indeed, the horror which had caught the world's ear happened in treeless space, remote like from the mansion and for many connecting woods. The nature and appearance of the lurking fear, nothing could be gained from the scared and witless shanty dwellers, same breath that they call a snake of giant thunder god or a day back the voucher, a walking tree we did have a theme ourselves justified, assuming it was a living organism, highly susceptible to electrical storms, and oh certain the story suggesting wings. He believed it was subversive to open spaces made local playing locomotion. A more probable theory, anything really compatible, compatible with the later view of rapidity which the creature must have travelled in order to reform all the deeds attributed to it. When we came to know the squatters better, we found them curiously delightable in some ways. Similar animals they were, gently descending, if ever entry scale, because of their unfortunate ancestry and stifling insulation. They feared outsiders, but slowly grew accustomed to us. Finally helping vastly, when we beat down all the thickets and tore out all the partitions I mentioned in our search for lurking fear, when we asked them, Help us find Bennett Toby. They were truly distressed. They wanted to help us. They knew these victims were gone as wholly out of the world as their own missing people. That great numbers of them had actually been killed or removed, just as the wild emmers had long been exterminated. We were, of course, thoroughly convinced. We waited and preferentially for further tragedy to occur. By mid of October, puzzled by any, our lack of progress, I enter clear nights, no demonic discretions taking place. Completeness of our vain searches of the house, country almost drove us to guard lurking fear, non material agency. Fear the cold weather would come and halt those situations. All agree that demons are generally quiet in winter. Thus, there is a kind of haste and desperation in our vast daylight canvases. The horror of few visit Hamlet, Hamlet now. Deserted because of spiritual fears. The ill fated squatter's hamlet had borne no name, a long stud in a sheltered, sheltered furrow through treeless cleft, between two elevations, could respectfully Cone Mountain and Maple Hill. It's closer to Maple Hill than to Cone Mountain. Some of the crude ab- abodes, Indeed, being dreaded out to the side of former eminence. Geography, Lee, it lay about two miles northward, west, base of Tempest Mountain, three miles from Oak Creek Mountain, the distance between the hamlet and mansion, fully two miles the quarter. Hamlet's side was entirely open country, a plain being in fairly level character, save as some of the low, snake like mountain mounds. Having a vegetation only grass and scattered weeds. But in his topography, he finally concluded the demon must have gone by way of Cone Mountain, a wooden straven population, which ran to which so short distance of the most spur of Tempest Mountain, the evil of ground we traced 
conclusively to lay aside from Mabel Hill, a tall, lone, splendid tree, which side had been striking point thunderbolt which summoned the fiend. As for the twentieth time or more, of our own, I went to make lately. Over every inch of the mere village, we filled with certain discouragement, covered with vague and noble fears. We could be uncanny, even with the frightful and uncanny things were common, and counted so blankly clueless. The scene which, after which such overwhelming occurrences moved about beneath the leaden, darkening sky in a tragic directionless veil, which results from a combined sense of fertility and necessary action. Our care was done gravely minute. Every cottage was gained when we en- entered. Every hillside dug out again. Search for bodies. Every thorny foot adjacent. Slope again scanned for. Dens and caves, all without result. As yet, I have said, vague new fears move hovered immensely after the, over us. As if a giant back winged graphophoids looked on trans- cosmetic gulfs. As the afternoon advanced became increasingly difficult. To see, and we heard a rumble, thunderstorm, growing old of Tempest Mountain. The sound of such a locality naturally stirred us, through less we would have done at night. It was, we hoped, desperately, the storm would less until well after dark, and a hope turned from our aimless hillside, searching towards the nearest inhabited of Amlet, to rather, to gather body squatters as helpless, investigation timid as they were, a few of the hunger men were significantly inspired by protective leadership that promised such help. We had hardly more than, we had hardly more than turned, however, when they were descending such a blinding sheet to rent rain and shelter became imperative. Stream most nocturnal most eternal night, darkness of sky, caused us to stumble badly, by guided by the frequent flashes of lightning, by one minute knowledge. The hamlet, we soon reached the less porous cabin of the lot, and a hesitant combination of logs and bulls, with still resisting door and strangled tiny window, both face mounting to the paper top. Bowing the door against us, against the ferry, the wind, wind and rain, we put in place this crude window shutter with our frequent searches, that taught us where to kind find the dismal sitting there. Of rickety boxes of factory darkness, we smoked pipes and cages flashed off pocket lamps about. Now and then we could see lingling through cracks in the wall. The afternoon was so incredibly dark, with each flash, flash was extremely vivid. The first stormy vigil, it reminded me subtly. My ghostly night at Tempest Mountain, my mind turned to the old question which might kept recurring ever since the nightmare thing that happened and again. I wondered why a demon approaching the three watches either from the window of the terror began with the men on each side, left the middle man till the last, tight and fireball, had scared it away. Why had he t- taken a victim of natural order? I only myself second. Or whatever direction they approached, if what manner of far reaching tentacles did it pray, or did it know that I was a leader and save me for worse fate than that of my companions? Amidst of these reflections, it directly arranged to intensify them. Then, near, nearby, a terrific bolt of lightning, followed by a second sound of sliding earth. Same time, the wolfish wing rose to a permanent crescendo's oscillation. We were sure that one tree and maple tree hill was struck again among row roads from the fox and went to the tiny window to certain the damage. They took down the shutter of the wind. The rain held deftly in, so I could not hear what he said. But I waited until he leaned out and tried to fathom natural pandodolium. Gradually, a calming of the wind, a dispersal of unusual darkness, Told of poems passing. I'd hoped it would last into the night to help our quest for the furtive sunbeam from a nut hole. 
behind me, removed as likelihood of such a thing. Suggesting that Monroe better get some light, even if there's some showers came. I barred and opened the chrome door. Ground a cane. Outside was a single mass of mud of pools with fresh heaps of mud, earth from slight landscape side. But I never saw nothing to just the interest which kept my companion suddenly leaning on the, at the window, crossing to where he landed. I touched his shoulder, but he did not move. Then as Clayfie shook him and turned him around, I felt the strangling tentacles of a conscious terror, horror, whose roots reached her into little limbs of past feminist abysms, or night that bruised beyond time. For Avalo was dead, on that what remained of his chewed, a gorged head, was no longer a face. Part three. What the red glare meant on the tempest wrecked night of this November eighth, nineteen twenty eight, with a lantern with the last canal shadows. I stood digging alone, idiotically at the grave of Jan Mentonese. Began to dig in the afternoon because the thunderstorm was brewing. Now it was dark, the storm had burst above the manically thick foliage. I was glad. I believe that my mind was partly unhinged by events since August 5th. Demon shadow in the mansion, general strain, disappointment, thing that occurred at Hamlet in the October storm. Of that thing, I had dug a grave on one with death I could not understand. Knew the others could not understand either, so I let them think off a row had wandered away. They searched but found nothing. Squatters might have understood, but I dare not frighten them more. I myself seemed strangely callous. The shock of my hansom done something to my brain. I could not, I could think only in a quest of horror, now grown a cosmetic struck statue, imagination of quest. For the fate of Arthur Moreau made me vow to keep silent and solitary. Seeing him at his activations would alone have been enough to have unnerved the ordinary, any ordinary man. Faithful primal trees and holy sighs, age and grotesqueness, leered above me like the pillars of some hellish Druidic temple, muffing the thunder or hushing the crawling wind, emitting a little rain beyond the scared trunks in the background. Eliminated by flash, f- faint flashes of filtered lightning, rose the damp ivy stones of a deserted mansion. Like, well, somewhere nearer was a abandoned Dutch garden whose walks and beds were polluted by white fungus furroid. Overnourished vegetation, I never saw that full daylight. And here's it all. Of all was the graveyard, with deformed trees tossed insane branches at their roots, displaced and hollowed slabs, such vermin, vermin, the which lay below. Now and then, beneath the burr and pale, the leaves rotted, fisted in an empty, delivering forest darkness, I could trace the sinister outlines of some of those low mounds which characterized a lightning pierced region. History had led me to this archaic grave. History indeed was all I had after everything else landed in mockery and satanism. I now believe that lurking fear was no material being but a thorough wolf ghost that drove the midnight lightning. I believe because the masses of local tradition unearthed in such a revival road that the ghost was that of Jen. Mentor who died in 1765, in 1762, is a wife digging a, 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 a in his grave. Mentor mansion was built in 1670 by Jarrett Mentor a wealthy new American uh, Amsterdam merchant, just like the changing order under British rule, structured to Mentor and Dussel, about Woodland Summit whose untrodden solitude and the usual scenery pleased him. A substantial disappointment carried in his sight was that of which concerned the prevalence of violent thunderstorms in summer. When selecting the hill 
a building his mansion. Madam here and Menines, a lady's frequent nurture about us, some peculiarity of the year. The time he seed the locality was especially liable to such a honour. At length, having found his thorns incongruous to his head, he fed up a corner into which he would retreat from their wildest pandemonium. A dreaded Mantini's descendants, less than known of himself, since they were weird by their own hatred of the English con- civilization, trained to shun each reconnaissance as, as the settler of it. Their life as a scene excluded. Included the people declared their insulation, made them heavy, the speech and comprehension. His appearance all were marked by a cooler inherited his very eyes, by only being blue and the other brown. Their social conduct grew fewer and fewer, till at last they took them into marrying the numerous men, men of class above the state, about the state. Many accredited family generations moved across the valley, merged in mongrel population, later produced the pitiful squatters. The rest was struck sullen by an ancestral invention, came more and more clannish and tetraturn, but delivering a nervous responsiveness to frequent thunderstorms. Most of this information reached the outside world through young Jan Mentonese, who had some kind of restlessness joined the colonel army, the news of the Abbey, Abney Convention reached Tempest Mountain, his first direct descendants to see much of the world. Returned in 1760, for six years of campaigning, he hated as much outside of where his father, uncles and brothers, in spite of his dissimilar, dissimilar meant to his eyes. No longer could he share the curiosities, prejudice of Mendelines, while the very mountains thunderstorms Failed to intoxicate him, said before. Instead, his surroundings oppressed him. He would frequently wrote to a friend at Elby a plan to leave the pentral roof. The spring of 1763, Gerald Gifford, Jonathan Gifford, an uh, at, at Bernie, friend of Jan McDee's, and these became worried by his comprehensive silence. Especially in view of the conditions, the crawls, and the many mansions. Determined to visit Jan in present person, he went into the mountains on horseback. The diary states that he reached Tempest Mountain, December 20th, finding the mansion in great deprivation, deprivation. Sullen old eyed Vandalese, with some clean animal aspect, shot him, told him in broken bruntals that Jan was dead. He had, they insisted, struck by lightning that the old from before, now lay buried behind, behind the neglected sunken gardens. They showed a visit of grey, barren and devoid of markets. Something the men his manner gave Skirford a feeling of repulsion and submission. A week later, his body turned a spade and bunnet to explore the sequential spot. He found what he expected, the skull crushed cruelly, as if by savage blows, turning to Emily, he openly charged the Mendonese with old murder of their clansmen. Legal evidence was lacking. The story spread rapidly around the countryside, and from that time the Mendonese were outstripped by the world. No one would deal with them, and their innocent manner was shunned, cursed place. Somehow they managed to live independently by product of their state. For occasional lights glimpsed from the far away hills, they said a continued presence. These lights were seen as late as 1810, but towards the last, they came very frequent. Meanwhile, they grew up about the mansion of the mountain, a body diabolical literary, place avoided with double asceticities, and invested every whispered myth tradition could supply, remained and visited till 1860. 16, when the continued absence of lights was noted by squatters, at that time, a party ran made his investigations, finding the house deserted and partly in ruins. There were no skeletons about, so the parts of rather than death was inferred. The clan seemed to have left several years before. Improvised penthouses showed 
Some numerous him had grown prior to migration. migration. Cultural level had fallen very low, proven by decaying furniture, scattered silverware, which must have been long abandoned when it left owners left. Though the food of the dreaded Mandanese were gone. The fear of the haunted house continued to grow very acute when new and strange stories arose among the mountain descendants, where it stood deserted, feared, and linked with an eventual ghost, Jan Mendonese. There still stood on the night a dug in Jan Mendonese's grave. The sky with protracted diggings of the Arctic, such as indeed it was an object of method, Coven Germanese had soon been earthed, and now held only dust and nitrate. But in my fury of Zoom, the good ghost, I delved rationally and clumsy down beneath where he had lain. God knows what I expected to find. I only felt I was digging for the grave of a man whose ghost stalked by night. It's possible to say what monstrous depth I attained when my spade soon my fate. Broke down, broke for the ground beneath. Bent under circumstances was tremendous. For in his existence of the subterranean space, here my mad fury is a terrible confirmation. My slight fall and distinguished lantern, I produced electric pocket lamp and viewed a small vertical tunnel which laid away depthfully in both directions. His ample large enough for my man to wiggle through, and though no same person, would have tried at that, that time. I forgot danger of reason cleanliness, and my single minded fever to unearth the lurking fear, choosing the direction towards the house, scrambled recklessly into the narrow burrow, squirming her head blindly and rapidly, and flashing the cell on the lamp I kept before me. A language can describe a spectacle of a man, lost of divinity, and visible earth, pouring, twisting, wheezing, Scrambling madly through sunken convulsions of immemorable darkness, blackness, without an idea of time, safety, direction, a definite object. There's something hideous in it, and that is what I did. I did it for so long, a life faded to a far memory. I became one with the moles and grubs and empty, lady depths. Indeed, it was only by accident, after inimitable waverings. I jarred my forgotten electric lamp alight, so that it shone eerily along the burrow, a cape loom stretched and curved ahead. I had been scrambling this way for some time, so that my factory had turned, burned very low, and a patch of sunny inclined, struggling up ahead, would, altering my mode of progress, and array my glance, without reparation I saw glistening in the distance, Two dramatic reflections my inspiring lamp. Two reflections growing with banal and inexplicable effort, effort glint, glints, provoking manly, numerous, mem, numerous memories. I stopped automatically, though lacking the brain to retreat. The eyes approached yet of the thing that bore them. I could only string his only claw, but what a claw, when far overhead, heard a faint crashing, which I recognised. It's a wild thunder of the mountain, great or hysteric fairy. I must have been crawling upward to the same for some time, so the surface was not quite near, and the muffled thunder clattered. Those eyes still stared with vancarious fishiness. Thank God I did not know what it was else I should have died. But I was saved by the very thunder that had, that had summoned it. After hideous weight, there burst from the unseen outside skies one of the most frequent man-side drop bolts whose un- aftermath I had noticed here of gashes of disturbed earth and frequencies of various sizes. The Cyprian range it tore through the soil above the down pit, binding him definitely, but not yet holding due to me to coma. Chaos is sliding, sliding, Sliding and shifting earth, I crawled and flourished, floundered helplessly till the rain my head steadied me. I saw I come to the surface of a famous spot, a steep and charred, a sorry place, the southwest of the slope of the mountain. 
A current street might illuminated. The tumble round and remains a curious low hammock. We stretched down from the wooden higher slope, but there was nothing in the chaos of slow my place. I aggressed on a lethal captain. My brain was a great curse as the earth, as distant red glare burst on the hill landscape. Myself, I hardly realised the horror I had been through. But when, two days later, the squad had told me a red glare meant, I felt more horror than which the mould burrow and clawed eyes had given. More because of the overwhelming implications. Hamlet, twenty miles, lay in a fear, orgy fear, I followed a bolt, which brought me above ground, a nameless thing, a drop from an hanging tree to a weak roofed cabin. Being a done, it had done a deed, but squatters fired the cabin frenzy because it could escape. It had been do, if it did, it had been doing that deed, at the very moment the earth caved in on one, one thing, a thing, in on the thing, the claw and the eyes. Part four, the horror in the eyes. There can be nothing normal in the mind of one knowing what I knew of the horrors of Tempest Mountain. The seek alone and the fear that lurked there. At least two of the fears, embodiments, were destroyed. Formed but a slight during the tree of the mental, physical safety, the acheron of multitude, deliberatism. I continued my quest with even greater zeal of events. Revelations became more monstrous. When two days after my frightful call for the crypt of eyes and claw, learned a thing and malignantly hovered twenty miles away, same instant the eyes were glaring at me, expected visual conversations of fright. But that f- fright was so mixed with wonder, luring grotesqueness, that it was almost a pleasant sensation. Somewhere in the throngs of the nightmare, when unseen powers well over the roofs of strange dead cities, towards the winding chasms and knees. I leave. It's a relief, even a delight to shriek wildly and throw one's self voluntary along the hideous vortex of doom, dream doom into whatever Botman's gulf may yawn. And so, in a walking nightmare of Tempest Mountain, discovery two months as a haunted spot gave me utterly. A mind craving to plunge into the heavy earth, cursed region, bare hand dug out the death, and leered from every inch of the poisonous soil. As soon as possible, I visited the grave of Jan Menendez, dug vainly where I had dug before. Some extensive caving had obliterated all traces underground passage. I rain and washed so much earth back into excavation, I could not tell how deeply. I dug the other day. Otherwise, I made a difficult trip. In St. Hamlet, the deaf creature had been burnt. I was little repaid. I was re- little repaid for my trouble. As to the faithful cabin, found so bones, but apparently none of the monsters. God has said the thing had only one victim. But then this I judged them in equa. Said besides the great skull of a human being, another bony fragment which seemed certainly to belong to a human skull at some time. Through the rapid drop the monster had been seen. No one say just what the creature was like. Those who glimpsed that it called it simply a devil. Examining the great tree where it lurked, I could not stir the distinctive marks. Found to try to find to trail to dark black forest. But on the Cajun this Cajun could not stand the sight of those morally large oil oils. Or those serpent like roots that twisted so malevolently before this, they sank into the earth. My next step was to re examine them with most subject care. So did Hamlet, whose death had come abruptly, where Arthur Moreau had some, seen something he never lived to describe. From my vain previous searches, I've been exceedingly minute. I now a new data to test my horrible months of crawl. To convince me that at least one of the phases of the tragedy been an underground creature. This time in the 14th of November, quest concerned itself mostly the slopes of Cone Mountain, maybe hill where they overlooked the unfortunate hamlet. I gave a cool intention 
loose earth and landslide region, latter eminence. That is not the afternoon of my search brought nothing to light, and dusk came as they stood on the manageable mountain, looking down the hamlet and across the valley of Tempest Mountain. There had been a gorgeous sunset. Now the moon came up very full and shredding a flood, silver flood on the purple plain. The distant mountain side of crisp mounds, mounds of rose here and there, with a peaceful Ukrainian scene. But nothing what I what it I hid, I hated it. I hated the mocking moon, hypocritical plain, fresh in mountain, with sinister grown mounds. Everything seemed to me tainted by lonesome confrontation, by by nutritious alliance, distorted hidden powers. Presently I gazed up strictly to the moonlight panorama. My eye began attracted to something singular in the nature and arrangement of a certain topographical element, without having any exact knowledge of geography. I have for the first been interested in the third bounds of hammocks of region. I noticed that very prettily widely distributed around Pampas Mountain, no less numerous than the plain, less Near the near the house of it itself, perfect transformation, the doubtless found deeper opposition, striking fantastic caprices. Now, in the light of the low moon, which cast long wee shadows, it struck me forcibly at various points and lines of violence's air system. Peculiar revelation, summit of the Tempest Mountain, a summit of the Dynamo center, for the lines of rows of points rated in, indefinitely and irregularly. As if wholesome man's needs mountain, mansion thrown visible tentacles of terror. The day of such tentacles gave me such plain thrill. I stopped to analyze my reason, but even his mounds flashed rule for none of them. I more assess analyze as less I bleed against my newly own mind began the grotesque and horrible energies based on superficial aspects upon my experience beneath the earth. For I knew it, I uttered f- frenzied, and dissuaded my words to myself, my God, hill moles, a dying place must be become a code. How many I might like might to mention? They took Burnett and Thornby first, each side of us. When I was digging frankly into the mound, which had stretched nearest me, digging desperately, shivering me, but most almost vividly, digging the last, last shrieking loud from a place of motion, they came upon a tunnel burrow, but just like the night, like the one called on the other domanic night. After that, I recall running, spade in hand, of hideous run across the moonlit and bound, marked mount, mountains, and through diseased preposes, precipitous abysses, haunted hillside forests, leaping, screaming, panting, bounding towards the terrible Mantonese expansion. I was getting all caught digging and reading in all parts of barrier choke cellar, digging to find the chore and scent of the malevolent universe of moulds, mounds. I now recall how I laughed and I stumbled on passageway, the hill at the base of old chimney, where the thick weeds grew and all past queer shadows in the light of the lone candle. I happened to be having, happened to have with me, where I still remain down. The hell, hell hive, lurking, waiting for the thunder of rails. I did not know two had been killed. Perhaps they had been, had finished it. But that still they remained a burning determination to reach into the most secret of the fear which I had once came down to deem definite material and organic. The excited speculation, speculation, indecisive I entered such a circulation, I went to explore the passage by blown immediately with my pocket light, the tri assembled band of squatters. Quest was directed at the time a sudden rush of wind from the outside blew out the candle, left me in stark darkness. The moon was no longer shone for the clinks and apertures above me. A sense of false alarm, full alarm, found a sense of significant rumble, approaching thunder, a confusion of social train. Ideas possessed my mind, leading to me grope back towards the covert corner of the cellar. My eyes, however, never turned away from the horrible open the base of the chimney. 
I began to get a glimpse of crumbling bricks and the hazy weeds of where it glows of glowing lightning, a faint glows of lightning. Crowd between the weeds outside and illuminated the clinks of a wall. Every second was consumed with fear, a mixture of fear and curiosity. What would the storm call forth? Or was it anything left of, for it to call? Guided by a lightning flash, I settled myself down behind a dense clump of vegetation. No, a witch I could see in an opening without being seen. His heaven was as merciful. It's still some day emphasis for my consciousness. The sight that I saw left me alone but live by any last years of peace, not sleep at night now. I have to take operates when it thunders. The thing came abruptly and announced a demon, fat like, scurrying from its pit, remote and unmanageable, hellish painting, stifled grunting. Then from the opening beneath the chimney, a burst of tenderness and liberous life. Loaves of light sprawled flood of organic corruption. Most uh, more devastating hideous, blackest contradictions of morbidly madness and morbidity, morbidity, seething, brewing, surging, bubbling like serpents, rolling, rolled up in out of rolling hole, spreading like septic Caucasian, steaming up through the cellar at every point of regress. Steam and it scattered through the accused midnight forest of strewn fear, madness, and death. Oh, knows how many men there were. There must have been thousands. The sea stream and then the faint, intermittent lightning was shot. When they thinned out enough to be glimpsed, the single organisms I saw they were the woofed, deformed, hairy devils of apes. Monstrous and diabolic characters of a monkey tribe. So hid his sonnet, a hardly a squeal, and one of the last stragglers turned with skull, long practice, skill, with skill, long practice, make a meal, a custom fashion, vegan companion. I was snacked up when it left and ate with a slivering, leaving relish. Then, in spite of my days of fight, disgust, my morbid crossly triumphed, and as the last of my atrocities oozed up alone, from either world or unknown nightmare, threw my atomic, drew my atomic pistol and shot it in a cover thunder, shrieking, slimmering, tormenting shadows of red visionless madness, chasing one another through the endless, instinguished corridors, purple, fanguculous sky, formless phantoms, kaleidoscopic mutations, a ghoulish remembered scene. Man, forest of Montreux, ominous oaks with stepped in servant roots, twisting and suckling and lame, memorable juices, but earth, memorous of millions of Campbell, bull devils, man like tentacles groping from underground nuclei, protoperious man version, inane lightning after midland vivo balls, demon echoes choked with ferrous vegetation. Heaven be thanked for the instinct, but let me unconscious to places. Where men dwelt to the powerful village that slept under the calm skies of clearing skies. Covered enough in a week to send for Albany for a gang of men to blow up the Mantonese mansion. Tired top of the table mountain, the mountain was diamond. Top of the scrambled mountain round barrels. And destroying certain overnourished trees whose very existence seemed to insult my sanity. I would sleep a little. After that, they had done this. My real true rest would never come as long as I remember the name of the The lucky fear, the thing will haunt me. The vulgar say that extermination is complete. The anomalies of phenomena do not exist all over the world. Who can, in my knowledge, think of the earth's un- unknown caverns, but a nightmare dread for future possibilities? I don't see a well. Of subway entrances without shuddering. Why cannot the doctors give me something to help me sleep or truly calm my brain when it thunders? I saw the glow of the flashlight that shot the unspeakable staggering object. It was simple, almost a minute, minute elapsed. When I stood and kept, went delirious. The object was the nurse, nurse, 
a filthy body to grin a thing with sharp yellow fangs and matted fur. It was the ultimate product of Mentelian degeneration, frightful outcome, I say sprawling, mentripulation, cannibal nutrition above and below the ground, your body and all the snarling, gnarling chaos and learning fear alert behind life. It looked at me, it died, its eyes were some same old quality, it marked those other eyes that stared at me underground, inside it cloudy re- recollections. Oh, and I was blue, the other was brown, they were December, meant to these eyes, are old legends. I knew the one underrated chasm, voice of horror, a calm, one of the vanished family, a terrible and thunder-crazed house of the Mantonese.